Wade Redden joining us from Kelowna, BC, the pride of Hillman, Saskatchewan. And we appreciate it uh, hanging with us and figuring out. Good morning, Wade. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm good, Rod. Thanks for having me. A little technical issues here, but we sounds like we got each other now. Yeah, it's worth the wait. Trust me, you look great. And, uh, of course, everybody remembers this. Wade Redden, mostly Ottawa Senators, 1,023 games. Um, Ottawa, St. Louis, Boston, and the Rangers, and then three seasons with the Brandon Wheat Kings when I was with PA and really uh, tore the heart out of the Raiders. We'll get to that, Wade. <laughs> but first, <Yes. laughs> your thoughts on uh, where the NHL is right now. Are you keeping up to date with the guys? Are you just sitting back as a fan? What's your take on where we sit today? Well, yeah, I mean, sitting back, basically, I'd call it that at this point. I like everyone else being home and then kind of sticking it close to home. I'd seen actually Andrew Ladd, who was with the Islanders, he just lives down the lake, and I saw him around town just riding his bike with his kids, and um, so I had a quick chat with him. Obviously, it would be nice to see some hockey again and be able to finish the season and, and do that, but um, yeah, uh, as a fan, I guess, is what's, what I am. It uh, would be nice to, to see if they could get it going again. Obviously, that's all up in the air with the situation. Right, so you're basically just following the media reports like everybody else. Is that what you're telling me? Yeah, yeah, no inside info here for you, unfortunately. But um, yeah, we'll see what what comes. It's just kind of wait and see, like like everything else. What about the Memorial Cup, by the way? You saw Colby Armstrong's clip from this show about how devastated yeah. he is. There's no cup. I am. How about you and all those hockey guys living out there? This is kind of devastating that the Kelowna is not going to be able to host it this spring. Well, for sure, it was exciting. I was looking forward to like watching uh, Colby on your show. There, he's obviously one of the main guys on that telecast. So I was looking forward to seeing him. I know him from, from the Saskatchewan days and then our families are old friends from way back. So that was disappointing. And then the Rockets, yeah, they were, they were coming on. They were having a, starting to pick things up and is, you know, disappointing obviously around here and all the excitement that brings with, with having a tournament like that. It was, it was uh, huge for this town and obviously going to be missed greatly. Well, you know what? We're not going anywhere. So I guess the next time it comes around for the dub, we'll probably back, be back in Kelowna. So we'll get out there by hook or by crook. It, 2013 was your last year, Wade. Seven years. It does not seem that long to me. How does it feel for you? It goes quick, man. Oh, man. I mean, I mean, they've been showing some old games. They just actually, my last team was Boston. They just showed Chicago winning that game six in Boston uh, and uh, yeah, it seems like yesterday, to be honest, 2013, June sometime. So um, yeah, it, uh, you know, life's good out here. We're in Kelowna, like, as you said, we, uh, you know, got a young family keeping us quite busy. That's kind of the focus. And obviously now I had to kind of steal the laptop from my daughter. We just got the one in the house. So she's off homeschooling right now. She can't do her homework. So she's probably happy about that. But uh it uh yeah so things are busy at home we're um you know like i said we got three young daughters so that that's really uh time just kind of blends into itself it seems in these days wow roughing it times are tough in the redden house one laptop how are, <laughs> how are you getting by oh <laughs> well, we got other devices to suffice us but uh yeah we're uh, we should probably upgrade that one it does have a little trouble getting onto your show here too so i could probably use a little Techno technological upgrade. Yeah, well, here, th there's your reason. <laughs> there's your reason yeah. to do it. Wade, <laughs> I just mentioned 1,023 games. What did it mean to you to get over 1,000? Because I know a lot of guys that just didn't quite get there. What did it mean for you to cross it? And what do you remember about your 1,000th game? Yeah, well, so it was a big, big moment for me, for sure. And then my path to get there was was a bit of a rocky one because I think when I got sent down by the Rangers, I was at 994 or 996, I forget. I was six games away, so I was 994. And to, to get that close and maybe not have that opportunity to do it was, uh, you know, so obviously I went down and, and uh, worked my way back and got that chance. And I was signed by St. Louis in that lockout year, and it was a huge moment. I mean, just to, it's a milestone that, that I'm very proud of and, you know, just the longevity to be able to stick around that long and, and uh, have that opportunity. It, it means a lot because I do know a lot of guys that got to 960. Some guys, Dean McCammond, who was with an, uh, Edmonton, or, sorry, in Ottawa, I think he's like 
probably less than 10 games away. So not that it makes a huge difference, but it's nice. You know, it feels good to get that thousandth for sure. Oh yeah, for sure. I can imagine. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, the guys talk about it when they when they don't get there. By the way, we got a lot of questions coming in from our viewers. If you don't mind, if you could ask a few or answer a few, Wade. Um, Chris yeah. in Toronto, Chris Cooper writes in. He says Wade is a big Ryder fan. Saw him at lots of Ryder games in Ottawa. Is that is that the truth? Did you go out and watch the green and white out there? Yes, I did. And uh, obviously, being from Saskatchewan, that's always been the Ryder. I always remember the Labor Day classics and. Uh, and watching Bobby Jerison and Ray Elgard, all those guys. Got to meet Ridgeway one time. He was doing a dinner in Lloydminster, I think, just before I went to Ottawa, right around those days. So, um, yeah, I remember going to watch them in Ottawa. I think it was, I forget, uh, they kind of had a team and didn't have a team there for a while in Ottawa, so I forget which actual year it was, but I do recall seeing the, the riders there. You know what's funny is that when the Red Blacks came back 2014, you were gone from Ottawa. Total reconfiguration of the stadium. It's beautiful now. It's awesome. But old lands down. I could tell you stories about that place. One time I was trapped in the press box by the biggest uh, muskrats you've ever, or whatever the hell they were, raccoons, raccoons in the press oh. box. And yeah, there was wildlife in the stadium. So if you can believe that. Yeah. Oh, old my school. Goodness. Uh, <laughs> That's fun. Yeah, it was. Well, it wasn't funny at the time. I couldn't get around these guys to get out. John in Vancouver writes in, says, what would Wade estimate as the number of retired hockey players living in Kelowna? Uh, well, there are a number of guys out here, and I know we have a skate every, well, through the winter, we, there's a bunch of us get together and skate. So there's maybe a, probably a dozen guys out there, but I mean, when you look up and down the whole valley, there's quite a few guys, um, quite a few guys. I don't know. I think they put the number at 70 or, or something like that. A lot of guys that are still playing and come back and spend the summers too. I know there's always a, there's a rink just where we skate at that, that all the current pro guys skate during the summer. So that's always a full skate. So there's, there's quite a few guys around. It's a nice area, um, obviously, and uh, a lot of guys like spending their time out here. Rod Monroe writes in and says, what was Wade's favorite defensive pairing? He's obviously talking about yourself. We had Derek Morris on here a week or two ago, and he said his was Keith Yandel. Uh, and that was the guy that he played the most games with. Uh, how about you, Wade? Did you have a favorite guy that uh, you felt most comfortable with? Um, well, I mean, when I look, obviously, in Ottawa, well, I think when Char came over there I, that first year, we played together. And then... Uh, yeah, and then I, there's a few other young guys that I played with, uh, Carl Rakunik. We had, that was probably our best year was 2003. That was my partner that year. We we played really well together. And then a few years, so I'd, I'd say Carl, who unfortunately was the captain of the locomotive team that, that went down. But he was, he was a strong, big, strong guy and could skate really well, had a great shot, um, there wasn't a lot of communication. I don't say much, and he didn't say a heck. He said a lot less than me, but we seemed to read off each other well and, uh, you know, kind of similar similar style. We both moved the puck, could skate. And, uh, Carl was, was a really good player. Our producer, Clark, is a huge Leafs fan. I'm going to out you, uh, Clark, uh, as is our no. co-host, Darren. Yeah, I know. At... <laughs> They want to know your take of the Battle of Ontario in the uh, mid to late 90s, Leafs Sens. What, what was that like? Well, those are a few other games that have been on Sportsnet here recently. And another, speaking of that, Corey Cross, who's an, actually another Lloyd boy like myself, but was with the Leafs and he's living in Kelowna now too. So we got a, you know, a close connection and he scored the overtime winner there, showing the game from 01. And, uh, so it's just hard to believe we lost four times to him. It's really disappointing when you look back because I just feel, you know, we had really good teams. I think they just had that uh, veteran presence that was able to kind of find the gut wins out. They had strong goaltending and, and just some real character guys that, that knew how to kind of play at that time of year. And we were still learning what, what the process was. So it was, Always exciting to play Toronto, even, you know, playoff series, but also just going in there on a Saturday night is, was always a highlight because there's such an energy in that town. It's, it was a fun place to, to go play. 
I'm going to roll our last question all into one. Dallas writes in, he's a scout for the Wheat Kings now. And he says, how was your time in Brandon with head coach Bobby Lowe's and assistant Mark Johnston? And I'll roll that into mine. Uh, the Raiders, PA just asked me the other day to fill out an alumni thing and said, what was your most memorable time with the Raiders? And I said, it was losing game seven, East final, 1995. Raiders at Wheat Kings on TSN. You remember it because a trip to the Memorial Cup mm-hmm. was on the line, and you guys won it, and you went. It was a hell of a tournament out there. Those years in Brandon with you guys might have been one of the best teams the Dubs ever seen. Yeah. Well, I remember TSN picked up. Well, they were doing game six, and then they turned around and put game seven on right away because it was such a good series. And, yeah, those, those years in Brandon, I still look back, you know, over my – career that was some of the best of my career Bobby Lowe's who was the coach and Mark Johnson were were unreal Kelly McCrimmon was the GM who I've got a connection with all those guys still so um you know it was a, a real you know young guys you're kind of a I guess just molding the, like being becoming men really right and they had such an influence and we were just soaking it all in we had good teams as you said to to you know, to go to the Memorial Cup, we ended up winning the league our last year and uh, and went to the Memorial Cup again. But those years were, were unreal. And those series against PA were were uh, epic, too. It was the next year we beat them again. And uh, it was hard-fought six-game series that year. But a lot of great memories of junior hockey. I, I look back those three years there really, really with a, with a highlight in my career. And I, and I wasn't sure. I thought... I didn't realize you're in PA. I thought you were maybe in Regina because I was talking to a buddy in, in Kelowna here who's from Regina, it's, and it's Kevin Knight. And I think his dad was involved with the team back in those days. But I always remember some of those series with Regina too, how they we had a huge brawl in the, the old Agra Dome after the <laughs> Marty game Murray and yeah. stuff like that. <laughs> we, Marty Murray. Marty Murray. And Marty's dad was with my mom actually at the game, and he got all scratched up and – it was just, an, I don't know. So I was thinking maybe I, somehow I thought you were the, you were with the Pats, but now I, now I realize you're with the Raiders, but uh, a lot of great days from those junior hockey years. But I will tell you this after 95, I went from PA to Regina, but so you guys played the Raiders the next year and Brad church, you remember churchy from Dauphin. Oh yeah. Uh, they beat us out with the Pats game seven of the second round. They went to play you guys and churchy said to me, we got them this year. And I'm thinking churchy, no, you don't. And I, th- I think you went to seven games <laughs> wow. the next year too with those with 96, right? Yeah, no. Yeah, it was, I think it was actually six games, but we were, yeah, it was another hard fought series because they had church and Steve Kelly, you know, great players, first round picks. I think they picked up Curtis Brown that year. Who's Shane another Knighty excellent, was still there. Great and yeah. Shane the Sheriff Knighty, yeah, who uh, who was there. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was uh yeah, that was that was a lot of fun. I remember because they kind of had us on the ropes at one point in that series. Uh, I think we cause I think it went two, we won the first two, then they won their two at home and I can still remember that feeling like not, we just can't lose this. It was, I mean, such an intense series and we're able to squeeze it, squeak it out. But, uh, you know, those were, yeah, awesome times. No doubt. Well, Redsy, uh, obviously we could go all day on this, but we should break it because yeah. we have the voice of the Wheat Kings coming in next, Brandon Crow. So uh, I appreciate the time. I hope we can do it again. Maybe in the Stanley Cup playoffs when they get rolling, we'll bring you on for some analysis. But uh, enjoy your time and That'd stay safe. And really, really glad to catch up with you. you. You as well, Rod. Appreciate that. And all the best to you guys. Hillman, Saskatchewan's Wade Redden checking in from Kelowna today. That was awesome. Oh, great. You're watching Rod Peterson On Demand. For more of the Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.